tax and educational institution. And XOS offers an integrated packet capture tool for control packets built on top of Wireshark, which is called Ethanalyzer. Remember, Wireshark on the Nexus 7000 is only for control packets. Already in the first release, it analyzer will be able to capture packets that are sent, received by the supervisor, and are to and from the I.O. modules as well as the management port. Set the number of the number and the length of the packet to be captured. Display packets with very detailed protocol information as well as with just a summarized one-liner info. You can save the packet that you capture on the storage devices that we have on the on the platform, you can also filter the captures and it is and it displays on many many criteria, very flexible way. So let's try to capture some traffic. So, it analyzer local because for now we have only local capture interface. So again, we can capture from both the I/O module, meaning the traffic that uh, is sent to the supervisor. Uh, from the I/O modules as well as from the management interface. So let's let's choose management interface first. So what do we do now? First of all, I want to show you the brief uh, mode, meaning uh, for each packet it will be like one line, probably two, because of the screen size, with the most important information about the packet. Brief. And also, uh, I want to limit the capture just to probably five packets. Okay, here they are. As you can see, I got some ARP, HSRP, and Telnet. Telnet probably, the Telnet is my Telnet session. So as you can see, all the most important information with some um, timestamps are actually showed when you select the brief mode. Without the, the brief mode, you will see the entire packet. So I want to limit the capture just to one packet, the first one. Here it is. As, as you can see, all the information very detailed and in a very readable format. As you can see, this one is actually a BPDU and uh, is a BPDU that we received on the management port. As well, you can also do the same thing on the inbound interface meaning the interface to which all the IO modules send the packet to the the packets to the supervisor here it is so let's see what kind of packet we received it's an OSPF packet okay as you can see all very detailed information it's based on Wireshark so you have all the fields with the explanation there so it was very easy for us to actually incorporate a tool like Wireshark Again, an XOS runs on top of a Linux kernel, so I won't be surprised if in the future we offer, we're going to offer our customers other tools uh, like, like in the same way we did for, uh, with Wireshark. But another thing you can do is also to capture, to capture the packets and save the capture on the boot flash, for example, or as I did. Uh, uh, in my lab several times, uh, save it on the USB card. Okay, you just uh, insert a USB key, save the capture there, then take the USB key, bring it to your laptop, and uh, use uh, the uh, Wireshark you have installed in your laptop, so it has a very nice uh, graphical interface. You can do also that. So you can do boot flash, cap one. Okay, it is, so if I do here, boot flash the, the file is there so Wireshark is very very powerful tool uh, on the Nexus 7000 is only for control plane packets okay for you can imagine that we cannot have Wireshark ethereal capturing all the traffic that we can handle with the platform meaning data traffic that would be something unreasonable for in order to see what's going on uh, on your data plane you need to use uh, span or NetFlow. Wireshark is only for control plane packets. Packets that are sent to the supervisor uh, from the management port or I, from the from the line cards. 
Step number 11, VDC, Virtual Device Contest. So during this lab, we were working only within pod number one, which is actually VDC. So for this step, we will actually log into the default VDC as a super user, meaning in the, in, in the system, uh, we will create a VDC. So first of all, uh, let's get out of this uh, pod uh, and let's log into the uh, default VDC, meaning into the real system as super user. Oops. Here we are. And XOS introduces the support for the virtual device contest. The virtual device contest allow the switch to be virtualized at the device level. Each configured VDC presents itself as a unique device within the framework of the physical switch. The VDC runs as a separate logical entity within the switch, maintaining its own unique set of running software processes, having its own configuration and being managed by a separate administrator. Now, let's see the VDCs that we have on this device. As you can see, we have a pod one, it's the pod where we were working on, and we also have the default VDC, which has the name of the system. Another thing we can see is, uh, the, uh, is the interfaces that belong to this pod. As you can see on the uh, system, the default VDC has all those interfaces that belong to that. While the pod that to where, we're, where we were working on has only 10 interfaces. So let's now create a new VDC. Okay, VDC, for example, pod two. Okay, as you can see, uh, there is a warning message that says that VDC creation is a time consuming process. It may take a while, it usually doesn't take long. Of course, it depends on the configuration. And also, as you can see, I don't have the um, license installed the advanced license. In fact, the service is using grace period. It will be shut down in 102 uh, days. After we create the VDC, we can start allocating ports to the VDC. For example, allocate interface um, Ethernet to uh, 30 to 40. Okay, let's see what, what he's saying. Moving ports will cause all config to be uh, pretty much lost. Okay, so that's fine. We are moving ports to a new VDC, so we want to clean up all the configuration, start from scratch, because again, it's a logically separate entity. We are creating a new logical switch within the next 7,000. So I'll say yes. Takes a while, not that long. Now, if there is some problem on the control plane, the administrator has also a set of options that can be configured on per VDC basis, defining what action will be taken regarding that VDC if such a critical problem occurs at the control plane. So what you can do is you define an HA policy for your VDC, and you can differentiate between the HA policy that will take place when you have a dual soup and also the a CHA policy that will take place in case you have just a single soup in the system. So let's say HA dual policy. This is what you can do. Let's suppose that there is a, a critical crash on the VDC. So you have the several options. You can bring down the VDC, meaning completely cancel the VDC, restart the VDC. So what happens is that the VDC crashes the VDC gets restarted by using the running config that was present at the moment of the crash. Or, if you have a dual soup, you can issue a switchover. So, the current active supervisor will become standby, he will switch over over the new active. In my case, I want to just restart. Okay. And also, what we, I can do now, I can specify the HA policy in case I have a single soup. In case I have a single soup, I can still bring down the VDC in case of a critical error, I can reload the supervisor, probably something that I don't want to do unless the VDC is critical to my operation, 